Okay, here we go. Coming to you again from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. <laughs> I have some time. It's hot. It's hotter than hell. <laughs> I just saw a Fahrenheit thing. It was 93, something like that. Um, anyway, so I've got to use the head thing because i got the, the headset. i got the, the uh, fan going. So what is this... Uh, this uh, talk about well, because uh, a lot of people have asked me about right brain thing, uh, right brain methods of foreign language learning or language learning. I will talk about a little bit about that. I'm going to talk about a lot of people want to know about the ALG automatic language growth method, and also I will do talk about TPR total physical response. Um, let's start with TPR in in the many ways because uh, TPR is the most studied, most researched language method of learning. That's because uh, Dr. James Asher ha had big grants back back in the day when he was uh, actually sponsored by the by the uh, Navy, actually. And he, for a short time, some of his stuff was implemented at the Defense Language Institute, which is where I went to one of the language schools I went to. It's the hardest in the world, the hardest thing I've ever done as far as language learning because of the intensity. The, um, I don't know why they did not continue to use his, his method. I think it's because of the time constraints, I think. But it's, it should be, I don't know what they're doing nowadays at DLI, so I, I can't tell. They got a lot more of state-of-the-art sort of uh, multimedia stuff. They're using uh, the touch screens. They've got internet things that they're using that they're they're you know video conferencing and, and doing other language conversation with that and analyzing things it's a, a lot of different world now with all that with all that uh, advent of that technology helping the um, learning methods but anyway let's back to TPR TPR like I said is the most studied most researched it's also the fastest way to get initial levels. Nothing is faster than TPR, nothing. I don't care what anybody else says, they don't have any research or proof of it doing faster because it can't. It is the fastest way to learn vocabulary. It is the fastest way to get uh, comprehension. It is the fastest way to get uh, performance it, because the performance is in reacting to the to the to the incoming message. I don't know how technical I want to get on this, so I'm pausing. I'm thinking about how technical I want to go with this uh, video. But uh, the receiver gets the input of the information and he's able to decode the uh, syntax. The syntax is semantics is what happens. This is using a role and reference grammar uh, understanding of what goes on between that. And then from the speaker is actually taking the semantics and encoding it to syntax. But it's the other way around for the listener. Anyway, for the listener or the receiver, it's understanding the syntax at the semantic level is able to act out what they mean. And the thing is that TPR bypasses the left brain as a right brain technique and it is no translation. <laughs> so it's very fast. It's very quick. You can get people to understand things in two or three days that, would, that takes in a left brain situation several weeks unless they're very gifted left brain and they have the learners and that they've passed several tests like the people who go to DLI do. You have to pass a lot of tests to prove that you're capable of downloading a great deal of information <laughs> via left brain methods. Uh, anyway, so TPR, uh, Asher is, uh, is used quite a bit in certain places in the United States, in, in high schools and even in middle schools. Uh, it's also methods are used in other countries besides the United States, but he is in the U.S. and I think he's at San Jose still um, in California. But anyway, uh, he worked with some other people. Uh, Garcia is one of the people that he worked with uh, quite a bit. And uh, from TPR, they went into uh, what became called uh, Total Physical Response Storytelling. And they renamed it something after story Storytelling, but still keeping the S as the, uh, the acronym. Uh, anyway, so storytelling is what I learned it as, that's what I use it as, and that's acting out parts of a larger context. It's of a discourse method to get people closer to understanding a more complicated uh, 
morphosyntactic structuring. Once again, I'm, I don't know. I cannot speak about this stuff without going into some technical details. Although I will keep it under the PhD level. <laughs> okay. The uh, so it's very good. And this is one of the th one of the uh, he's one of the, that's one of the ways that you can actually handle the um, sort of morphosyntactic understanding of a language without going resorting to a left brain only uh, method. Yeah. And this is the problem because uh, when you start getting to that, because, okay, speaking and listening is a right brain activity uh, in its capacity of acquisition, because that's what acquisition is. Now, when you get to learning, even though people in their L1, their, their L1, when they get to school, they learn to read and write. They don't acquire reading and writing. They are taught it, and it goes through a left brain approach. And some places use that through a rote method, and just drill it in, you know, beat it into them, and that works. And of course, they're doing it when the um, when kids are young. It's they're, they're more impressionable. That's part of your evolutionarily d d designed brain to input things, uh, and have more impression to you when you're young, because that's the sort of things that are going to become crystallized from your fluid uh, intelligence. So once again, if you can't keep up with me, sorry, but that's just how it goes when we start talking about this stuff. You need to know about learning theory, you need to know about psychology, you need to know about linguistics. To understand what I'm saying, that's why these YT guys, these U YouTube wannabe uh, dilettantes, don't, can't follow because they don't understand. Uh, I will jump over to Krashen and Terrell in their book, and The Natural Approach. They said to use TPR. Uh, comprehensible input means that you're understanding 90% of what's coming in and the 10% and you should even be higher than 90 is th things you can you can uh, understand from the context what the word the unknown lexical unit or at the phone uh, phonemic morphine level you don't know what it is by itself but from its context it's pragmatic use <laughs> and then you can understand and that's something that's what people like um, uh, Kaufman does not get neither do any of his uh, acolytes who come to just keep babbling about input input doesn't do anything I could turn a radio on and you won't get anything from that I could leave you in a room with that radio it doesn't it's not going to do anything for you because you need to see other things going on than just hearing an audio sound that means nothing no one's learned just from audio sound you, you have to see it paired with actions guided uh, uh, mimicry a lot of stuff's going on and that's where TPR comes in at that level um, now let's uh, jump over to ALG automatic language growth developed originally by uh, a guy named Dr. Brown who was uh, actual PhD in linguistics and uh, had used a left brain approach in teaching Thai in the uh, in Thailand to obviously foreigners <laughs> and he devised all of a sudden a method of using uh, right brain actually of having two speakers do a conversation between the two speakers but acting out parts of what they were doing so that the people watching could start to decipher what was going on just like you do when you're a child you don't understand everything that's coming at you you understand parts of the experience it's experiential learning which is very strong and it's also how we're evolutionarily designed to learn or acquire I should say acquire so you're acquiring knowledge <coughs> by seeing a bunch of interactions after who knows every time it's different for each person it's also uh, social sociologically um, detailed because people from certain cultures learn certain languages faster because it's closer to their own customs that they already know. I'm not talking about is their L2, okay? So if you're learning Thai as an L2 and you're from an Oriental culture, uh, to learn Thai that is, it's going to be much, you're much faster at learning Thai. And it's not because you're used to certain, certain you know, folk ways, mores, and, and societal norms. Uh, whereas, uh, Western languages, European languages are, are learned much faster by other Europeans because they share uh, the same sort of uh, sociological structures to their societies. Anyway, so getting back to ALG, uh, so ALG was set up as a two-person uh, conversation between two people uh, speaking normal rate of speech. They don't, they don't 
baby slow down that fake classroom speech you'll hear in uh, middle schools and high schools throughout the United States, for example. I want you, you know, <laughs> I'm doing it in English uh, to uh, be sticking with one language right now. Anyway, so the ALG method was set up with two people all the time so that students would watch. They were not supposed to speak for a long time. Now, okay, let's talk about ALG. Unfortunately, ALG is only used in Thailand and is only used to teach Thai to foreigners. Okay, Thai is not a world language. It doesn't have a lot of power. It doesn't have a, what we'd say in social linguistic. It doesn't have a lot of prestige because it's, it's, an, a, geo, it's a geo-locked language. And um, so its worth is low globally. Now, you add on to the fact that ALG takes a lot of time. This is another problem with it because uh, um, the guy running the program right now is saying that you need at least a thousand hours as a, a foreigner of hearing listening before you can start really grasping what the language is about and then starting to speak. Um, that's a long time, believe me. If you were in the DLI or FSI program, you would be done <laughs> at that point in time, and you would be far ahead. The, the ALG method is starting out. It's very slow, very slow, uh, very slow. Other methods using uh, intensive left brain approach also and combine it with TPR, the people will be up here the same amount of hours. They will be way up here where the ALG people will be down here. Now, if you also do, if you're paying for the classes, <laughs> you're going to be paying more for ALG because the hours are just so many much more. Plus, they don't start uh, reading and writing until after they're capable of speaking uh, and listening, listening and speaking, I should say. So their, their problem, their hang up, what they haven't figured out yet why they're having such a hang-up, why they have a lag time when they switch over to, to reading and writing is that they're going from acquiring, they're going from right brain techniques, now they're switching back to left brain techniques. And um, This is one of the problems with the LG. It has not been researched. Nobody studied it. Nobody over there now is an academic or has academic ties or has got grant money behind them or has funding. And it's not used for anything other than and Thai. There is uh, a little bit of Japanese going on, but it's not it's not their primary focus. So, for them to grow, people have asked me about it. What you know, I I know I was there f for a while, but once again, uh, I can't commit that sort of time. I've got other things to do. Um, and uh, another friend of mine had also committed a lot of time through various years to going to them, but it has not made it all the way through either because of the, that same fact. The people that, uh, that it's aimed for basically are retirees who don't have to worry about an income, who don't have to work, who have a lot of time uh, to do nothing other than and be immersed in, in tie in the classroom. Unfortunately, a lot of them uh, are go back to their, <laughs> their wife who speaks uh, English or uh, another European language, and they don't interface like they should there with the with just constant Thai. Um, anyway, but ALG does work. It's slow. It's costly. It won't be exported to uh, to any government programs because it's just it's not it's not cost efficient. The, it's one of its problems, and it's it, and it's being used on geolock languages. It needs to be moved over to world languages, then it would see a huge jump, and it's and it needs to be researched by academics. These are the things holding ALG back. People ask me, should I do ALG? I said, how much time do you have? <laughs> if you've got a lot of time, then yeah. Also, um, the guy who's running the program. Um, David Long keeps talking about fluency, fluency, but what do a lot of people need? Are they going to discuss Kierkegaard or Sartre in Thai? Uh, probably not, you know. They're going to, are they going to, are they going to have long and involved political discussions in Thai? No, they're not. So what do they need? They need a level of um, functioning. They need to be able to handle things like, uh, what, which is, it, in another way, it's called situational learning, uh, topic learning, uh, situational time. They need to do things like banking, travel, 
uh, all these things, be able to understand uh, news. They need to be able to understand a variety of speakers, uh, the four different major 